Okay, guys. I know that surface area is something that we did not talk about at school before we left. I know if you remember, Mrs. Latfalian came in and did that lesson with us about when we had all the different sized boxes and things like that. But that was more of an inquiry where you were trying to see if you could figure it out without knowing the formula. Um, so that's what this is. It's that, except now I'm asking you to actually know how to do it and use the formula. And if you've made it this far, then you're doing a really good job because surface area isn't a fourth grade standard and it isn't a fifth grade standard. And I don't even think it's a sixth grade standard. I think they've moved it um, higher than that. So it's something that's kind of complicated, but I know that you're up for it because all it really is is addition and multiplication. And I know you already know how to do that. Okay, so let's take a look at this shape. Um, if you were finding the area of a shape, you all know how to do that. So if I gave you this shape down here and said, find the area of that shape, everybody would know how to do that. You would say length times width, you would say 44, whatever the unit is, and you'd be done. And it's not that different. So you see up here, you have all these multiplication problems. And that's because if you remember from that lesson that we did with Mrs. Slotfolion, you're really trying to figure out the area of this shape and the area of this shape and the area of this shape. You're trying to find the area. I'm looking around for a rectangular prism. Oh, here, I have one. Here I am. You're trying to find the area of all of the sides, okay? And you're putting those together. So that's a little different than just finding the area of this, which is just one step. But I promise you, if you can find the area of this one step, then you can just add all the areas together and figure it out. So let's take a look. This is the problem on your Monday DMR, all right? And your shape has um, the length is 11 and the height is 4 and then this number here is the width. You also know as well as I do that when you multiply numbers it doesn't matter what order they're in. 6 times 4 is the same as 4 times 6 so as long as you you label these and stick with it, it doesn't really matter if you label them the same way that I labeled them. Okay, so let's take a look. If I want to find the area of this shape right here, you all know that looks like this and it's 44. Okay, this is length times width. Okay, so then if I want to find the area of the front or of this one, I'm going to use this number and this number. So, newsflash, that is still 4 times 11. It's just a different 4. Okay. Now, the only shape that I haven't used yet is this one of the sides. Okay, and if I want to use the sides, then I'm using this number and this number. And you all know 4 times 4 is 16. And that is um, width times height. This one is Sorry about that. All right, so now that I have all these done, all I really need to do is add them back together twice and then be done. So right now I've got 16 as one of my answers, which is this one. And I've got 44 is this one. And I've got another 44 which is that one. So, so far I've done all the parts of the problem. I keep going. 44 plus 44 is 88. 
4 plus 4 is 8 plus 6. Now I'm on the spot and I have to do addition. 8 plus 6 is 14. 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. So I end up with 104. But I'm not done yet. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes, I hope you're thinking that um, in order to have a rectangular prism, you need to do every number twice because you've got this side is the same as this side, and this side is the same as this side, and this side is the same as this side. So you have every side twice. So you need to multiply that times two. And you're all excellent at multiplication. So you know that that is 208. And that is the answer to the Monday problem. Really, if you just piece apart the problem and do it one side at a time, and it doesn't hurt to color code it or shade it or circle it or do something like that so that you can keep track of what you're doing. I can guarantee you that one of the problems that you're making is that you're not like having a system. So if you have a system like I did, how I did each side one at a time, and then I made sure that I used each side, if you do it one step at a time and you stop trying to do it in your head, you'll be doing better. I mean, come on, I know what 8 plus 6 is, and I still had a hard time up here doing it. So just stop trying to do stuff in your head. Do it on the paper. This is the perfect time for that. No one's going to know if you did it on your head or on the paper because no one's going to see your paper. All right, so... Let me know if you have any more questions about surface area. If you're in a DMR group, you should definitely be talking to Mrs. Peacock about your questions about surface area. I just know that after she worked with you last week, some of you still had a hard time with that, and I wanted to make sure that I tried to help. All right, so let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you later.